On tonight's show, we have cartoon artist David Gordon. And now for your host, Cool Car. Welcome to the first episode of the new year, you guys. 2022. I hope everybody had a great New Year's. Celebrate it, whether if it was quiet or you out in the streets doing your thing. I don't know how much of that, you know, how much y'all doing that with COVID and all that, but I, you know, I mean, I don't know. Who knows what anybody's doing? But have you celebrated? I hope that it was a great celebration. You celebrated life, celebrated your family. I know I, I, I just kicked it with my family, man. I actually kicked it with my family, and then later on that night, I hung out in the metaverse. <laughs> So that might sound crazy to you, but yeah, I, I actually hung out in the metaverse. All right. So listen, man, many blessings to everybody. Thank you guys for sticking with me. We, listen, I'm going on two years. Man, I, this is two. Yeah, this is two years. Two years of the show. It's two years of the show, you guys. I don't even know my anniversary date anymore, but it's two years of the show. First episode of 2022. And we're going to keep this thing rolling. Keep it rolling. Providing this value, bringing you great guests. I got another great guest on tonight um make sure you check out last week's episode though i had chasmin white she's a celebrity makeup artist she does a thing she does lashes she's a mobile makeup artist she's been on sets she's been on music videos she's been on everything man and she has a lot of high 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 clientele um clients i guess you want to say um she does a thing man she really does a thing make sure you check her out go support her if you need your makeup done you're in the area atlanta area she's your girl all right Holla at her. But listen, oh, and the episode is up, so go stream it and like it and share it and all that good stuff, all right? Just support black business, support entrepreneur, just support people doing good things, all right? Anyway, moving on. Tonight, we have a cartoon artist. He's He does everything, screenplays, storyboards, he, he, he draws. He Listen, I don't even know if I'm doing him justice calling him a cartoon artist because he does so much more, but he does draw cartoons. He has comic books he's he, man he's doing great things he has his own studio foresight studio where he makes magic happen all right he's, he goes by the name of david gordon i'm gonna bring him right on in with a warm welcome and we're gonna jump in because i'm excited about this man we all grew up on comics whether it was cartoons whatever have you 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 like you liked a few comics or cartoons in your life so let's jump right in let's get it y'all Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show, David Gordon, guys. What's hey, up, guys. brother? <laughs> How's it going? Oh, man, blessed, blessed, and more blessed. Just thankful to be here, thankful for having you on the show. Uh, yeah, man, it's good. How was your new year? Uh, so far, so good. I, I, I'm not going to complain. It's a good new year. It's a good new year. Yeah, man. Hey, we're Get here to, to talk, talk about you. So... Listen, put 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 all that good energy out there. The new year's gonna be great. <laughs> Off to a great start. We're here. We're here to talk about you, to celebrate you, celebrate everything you got going on. So, yes, yes, yes. It's gonna be a great year. Hey, real quick, I do like to start all of my shows with a prayer. Mm -hmm. I gotta ask, are you okay with that? Are you comfortable? Oh, yeah, with that? that's dope. Yeah. Cool. Let's get it. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for just bringing us through through another year to this day, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, to just join 
and and communicate in good conversation honey follow jesus we celebrate david today and all of his accolades and all of his his blessings and all the great things that he's doing honey follow lord jesus we just pray and ask that you just bless him and continue blessing him and his family lord jesus lift us all up we just thank you for just allowing us to wake up to see another blessed day we just give you all the victory all the glory all the love all the praise heavenly father lord jesus and we just humbly pray pray in your name amen amen yes sir yes sir yes sir yes sir That's hey cool. man <laughs> cartoon my first question to you what were your favorite cartoons growing up comic books cartoons let's let's start there oh boy so uh i'm surprisingly old <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so man. I grew up on old um, old Hanna Barbera cartoons were were what is what got me started. Old Hanna Barbera cartoons and Godzilla movies. That's what got me. That's what got me going. So um, Johnny Quest, um, Herculoid stuff like that, and then you just kind of you're going through the the seventies and eighties. You get to GI Joe and Transformers and Voltron and 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 Bionic Six, and and by then. You're in high school and you're just fully indoctrinated into the into the culture and then you start reading books like x-men and yep. avengers and and um justice league and 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 um uh just all just all kinds of, just every kind of comic book possible and and how do you feel that that has had an impact how how has that had an impact on your creativity and and how you create to, today uh, well, I knew at a young age I wanted to tell stories. I always wanted to be a storyteller. Um, so those were the first cartoons and comics were the way that uh, I learned to express, express, you know, to really tell tell stories. Okay. Uh, through comics and comic books, especially through comics and comic books. Comic strips first, and then as I got older, I wanted to tell longer stories. So to through the form of comic books. So. so Always wanted to be a storyteller. Always had something to say about something. So uh, that was just kind of my way of uh, expressing it. Okay. That's so why I read that um, as a kid, you got turned down. And that kind of motivated you, catapulted you <laughs> to, to, to be better, to do better, and then to get now, to where you are now. Owning your own studio, having some success. You've worked in, in, in a, I don't want to say a corporate setting, but you've worked with corporations. Mm hmm all that well there's a caveat to that story now okay. I, you have to understand i was 10 years old okay 10 years old and um uh back then you didn't you know there's no there's no internet or anything like that I, so i had to look through the the section of the newspaper where they list out all the editors and everything and i found the editor for the um section of the newspaper that ran the comics oh wow and um and of course, back then they had the PO, the you know, hey, you want to send some information? So I'm a ten year old kid drawing this stuff. It's on line paper. <laughs> no, no, there's no sense of uh, professionality other than it was it was a kind of like the guy was like, well, it's well drawn. <laughs> I can't print this, but it's well drawn. So there was no way I was going to break into break into it that way. But what it did. Uh, it, it encouraged me because he actually he literally laughed at the the strip. Uh, on, we were on the phone. I kept calling him. Kept calling the guy. I know his poor secretary was like, "Look, this kid keeps calling you. Ten he, years old. He's talked to him." And when he finally opened up and he laughed at the comic strip, but at least I was like, "Oh, I made an adult laugh." Yeah. <laughs> so from there, it's like, okay, well, if I can get some 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 old guy to laugh, then I obviously I can I can do this. Yeah. So what what happened after that? Did you did you like growing up? Did you seek training? Like how 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 did your journey go? Growing up in school, did you take classes? Were you in art classes? Did you take outside classes? What what what'd you do to kind of hone your skills? Well, what I basically did, uh, I went I, in school in high school. You know, you take art classes. You could pick take art in school, and my story was basically I drew in every class that I was in. So you didn't like, pay attention. There may or may not have been a couple <laughs> incidents where parents would come home from parent teacher conference and the conversation would be, look, if one more year, one more teacher tells me how nice you are, but you're always drawing in class, I may have to bury you somewhere. So <laughs> that may have been said. I'm not going to say if it was or not, but 
there may have been that type of a situation that that popped off because i did i was by then i had comic books and i was just drawing just drawing drawing drawing, drawing drawing and and honestly that's is it's just like um i say there's a very thin line between art and sports because honestly you have to practice your craft all the yeah. time either consciously or unconsciously the only only thing with 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 comics and art uh, uh and comics and this type of thing is that we don't have coaches you kind of your own self coach yeah until you get to college and even at college it's still not it wasn't like back then it's, it wasn't like looked at as the ultimate career path so you had to take just normal uh drawing and anatomy classes which you need anyway yeah but they don't tell you how to be a visual storyteller which is where my uh, interest and my career tracked into so with your parents coming home telling you, hey, you need to stop drawing in class. Allegedly. When, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> when was it for them that they actually were like, oh, this could really be something. This could really be a career path. And then what was the struggle that you had? Because, of course, most people are like, you want to be an artist. Like, you're not going to make any money. What was that struggle like? With the naysayers, the doubters, and you just knowing like, hey, this is what this is for me. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm gonna do. Well, the thing about it is, is that um, part of the reason why people don't look at it as a career path even up until today is because it's just one of those things where it's like it's like acting. You only see a select few. You don't see right. the, the many, many hundreds of people that are are successfully holding a career of some sort within that industry. Mm -hmm. And I also, now being, having been in the comic book industry, having worked in, in these industries, some of these industries, they kind of shoot themselves in the foot because they don't make themselves accessible to, we would call, I guess you would call them the masses, the normal people that, you know, the everyday folk. Right. So obviously like, being a lawyer, being a doctor, all that type of stuff, they make themselves accessible. You see it. You 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 understand it. You can uh, you can see it. So parents, when they can't see what a person's doing, they think that it's just some guy in the basement drawing and and he never moves out. You know th those tropes take they take effect. Yeah. So so it, what I've come to learn is that a lot of times people aren't so much hating; they just don't understand it. They don't see. Yeah. We have to we have to show them like shows like this help show that hey you can have a viable career you can do things right. and you can move forward and the people that are working within the industry we need to open up a little bit better about that about now that, that journey insane. about yeah, that journey yeah about that journey so that's what i was going to ask you next like what is that i'm going to come back to something too but i want to know mm -hmm. what is that what does that journey look like where do you go like okay you coming from the kid just drawing in class mm -hmm. To maybe going to college and taking art classes, taking drawing classes, where do you go from there? Like, how does that journey look? How can, uh, how can you encourage somebody to stay the course? Be like, hey, no, listen, there really is a, a path, a structure. And I know everything is different, whatever, but it's not really a structured path. But just so that you can, okay, act like you're talking to the parents who don't understand. <laughs> Create a structured path so that they can understand that, hey, this can take me to X, Y, Z, me owning my own studio or working for a firm that creates comic books or whatever. There you go. Uh, so I always like to use the sports, the sports analogy. So just like, just like if you're, you're the parent of a, um, a basketball player, football player, soccer player, the, the track is similar in a lot of ways. Uh, it's a couple, you know, a couple different ways. Obviously, you go to school. Um, you, if you graduate from school, then you can go into industries from comics to cart to animation to to video games. And the video game industry is really is what's making this a lot realer for a lot of people because now they can they understand. Oh, you're going to be drawing Pac-Man. You know, they parents are going to default to <laughs> right. You, you're going to be drawing Pac-Man. It's like, yeah, mom, I'm drawing Pac-Man. You're working on Call of Duty or something. So. <laughs> Whatever it takes to get you to understand, mom, I'm right. gonna get you there. <laughs> right. So there's always that track. Then there's the track of uh, I'm just going to be kind of this journeyman, and I'm just going to train and practice, and maybe go go spend some time over in in Korea, or spend some time in France, or do or, or work freelance jobs, and just 
work my way up until the point that everybody knows me and uh you know i have such a following that the other the cor corporations have to have to hire me okay and then of course there's there's this newer path now where which is basically you can be in school or you can drop out of school uh you just have to build up a following on the internet on social media mm -hmm. and right one you can monetize that that following um you can monetize it uh just from them you can put out your work and then you can put out shirts and merchandise and sell that to your your fan base uh that's in, that's one way uh, obviously by creating content you can monetize that way but also um you know in this entertainment industry that we're in you know it's become important that you have a social media following so if yeah. the corporations see that you you're oh you're this person you've got this many xyz number of followers we right. need you because we know if we have your art that's going to attract your your following so the career paths are really varied okay but but uh, but again if we if i think for the parents that may not understand if you treat your child as an artist like you would treat your child as an athlete meaning get them coaching mm -hmm. get them on the right path get them the right mentors start looking into the possible career paths within the in, in the industries they're talking about because if your your kids watching a lot of anime and playing a lot of video games you say well you like drawing the video game characters and they say yeah you you just, again it's up you know as a parent got to do your research yeah and then if you do your research you're like okay then you can start looking for you can even look for some of these guys these guys most of these guys are helpful and not standoffish so you can reach out to them and say hey my kid my kid wants to do uh, art for a video game. Okay. What's some what's some things that they need to work on? Could you look at their portfolio? Could you could you do you know X Y and Z? Right. And um, I know I I do it um, and I've done it and going to continue doing it. And I know a lot of other artists they do it. So it those those are the kind of ways. But but that's that's how I would do it. I would think that that's kind of. I mean, you did talk about video games. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like when when parents are like, "Boy, you better get your ASS off that damn game and go outside and play." But you can't say that anymore. No, not when got... people are winning million dollar prizes on, on yeah. in the, in the esports tournament. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You got esports teams mm -hmm. being you're, you're being sponsored, funded, everything's paid for. All you got to do is sit in a house with a couple guys and play some games against a couple guys across the world in another house. <laughs> funny, funny story. My uh, very close friend of mine, um, she just she she found out her her, her son's um, into the computer gaming. Mm -hmm. So she she always asked me. She's like, she's it's like, well, what kind of computer should I get? And we'll get this type of computer and and everything. And I said, well, wait a minute. Have you noticed that he's had money a lot lately? And she was <laughs> like, yeah. In fact, he got this fancy chair. I don't know how he got it, cause he, cause his grandma didn't get it for him. I didn't get it for him. But somehow he got this fancy chair. I don't know if he saved up his allowance. I said no. Ask him. Ask him this. Does he have a Twitch channel? <laughs> she went and asked. She said he said yes. I said yeah. Your son is earning money right now. But how is he getting the money? Does he have a debit card? Yes. Oh, it's going directly onto his debit card. They're getting super chats. Yep. They're getting the, you know, they, you know, on Twitch, you get, you get the people that subscribe to you. Yeah. So it's, her son probably got about 50, 60 people that subscribe to him. That's at least a good five dollars per person a month. Right. The math is the math. <laughs> <laughs> you get sixty people at five dollars. That's three hundred dollars. Twitch will take out their little ten percent. That's thirty dollars. You fuck. You got a kid that's fifteen, sixteen. He's making the. He's two hundred eighty a month. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, so now as a parent, you got to become business minded in that, in that sense and figure out how to scale that. Help yeah. him scale that. Yeah. You know I mean, uh, there's a reason why Ninja got that money from Microsoft to leave Twitch. And he got uh, he got that money. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, right. You know. Yeah, man. It's a whole new world, man. It's a whole new world. And there's another because you were talking about artists can sell their merchandise and their drawings and stuff like that mm -hmm. definitely want to get into some nfts a little later on we 
talk about that because I, I I um I saw something where you said you you gearing up to launch yours, and um yes, I'm very interested <laughs> in learning about your journey with that because I'm digging into the NFTs and I'm heavy into crypto and all that too. So yeah, we definitely get into that. <laughs> um, oh, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Now, um, it, I'm not gonna beat a dead horse, but as far as that journey is concerned, like what were some of your earlier struggles, you know, when you were first getting your feet wet, you know what I'm saying? And trying to get your name out there, you know, talk to, talk to the kid that's that's struggling right now, trying to, trying to find his way. So I basically got started, I would say semi-professionally into my professional life in the early early 90s and i was blessed um very very blessed to have been able to meet a group of guys uh that to this day we're you know uh we're all still friends and we will still work together for the most part um but i was very blessed to to, to get a crew okay because uh, again there's no internet this the 90s early 90s yeah. no internet nothing like that so you're always an island unto yourself so right when you finally meet some people, you're like, oh, man, there's other black people that's into this? <laughs> oh, snap! And then, you know, uh, that was the, that was, that's Wu-Tang, and all these cliques were kind of, that was the time when you built crews. Yeah. And we built this crew of artists, um, Aerosol, uh, and later became Mach 1, and now we've kind of all splintered off into our, our different, our, our final, or professional lives. Okay. But, uh, through that time, that was um, some ups. It was it was some ups. Like you know, uh, you'd have shops and you'd be doing projects and you'd be working at uh, Fair St. Louis or you'd be uh, doing murals for for people. And it, but then there were downs when it wasn't no money coming in. Right. I mean, you kind of he's kind of looking around like, hey bro, hey bro. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how we're gonna pay rent for here. <laughs> Ready for the house? <laughs> I don't even know how we're gonna eat lunch for any of us. We all sitting there. You ain't money, no, I ain't got no money. So then you luck up, get twenty dollars, and it's like, look, man, we, I'm about to run over to this Popeyes to get this two, these two ten for ten for tens. <laughs> so uh, those were there were those times. Um, yeah. There were times you're dealing with um, customers that may not understand, and you have, and then you as a as a growing business person, you don't know how to quote prices correctly. You don't always know how to. You don't really know your it, worth just yet. No, you don't know what the worth is yeah. just yet. So you're making these these mistakes, and you'll look back at it. Oh, why well, well, was I? You you're just learning. You're a rookie. That this is these these are your rookie years. Right. So we're going. You're going through them. Then people come through. I've got this big project. We're going to get this much money, and then. Four weeks later, where'd that person go? They, you know, so yeah. you got to deal with those emotional ups, those emotional downs. All of that is part of the journey. Um, and especially if you're a freelance style artist like we were, uh, that was just that's just par for the course. Um, now there are other artists that are going to the going to the more corporate settings, and you're going to deal with, but you're going to deal with all the things that come with corporate exactly. supervisors, <laughs> um, yeah, quotas. Uh, right productivity uh reviews right this isn't good enough do mm -hmm. it over change this change that or, or you know uh hey uh we need y'all to do overtime but we ain't gonna pay you for it but we need to do it because we gotta get this project done like, yeah so you know <laughs> it's there's always going to be those struggles i think the road that we took was a little bit harder because we were we were freelancers we were grouped up and we were trying to create your own link. Yeah, pull in customers and, yeah. and and create our own at the same time, and we didn't understand the balance that that took at that time. Yeah. Uh, but as but as time passed on, we 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 got to a point where we were able to get things going. Yeah, I was and, gonna ask where was the shift at where you kind of kind of clicked like, oh well, okay, I kind of know my worth now, and this is what I'm charging, and that's just what it's gonna be, you know, and you kind of create your own destiny of your own you know what i mean mm -hmm. um i think you know as you give uh, i'd say about a good five ten years in you kind of start understanding a lot more a lot better okay. uh what how the how the business works and how you're supposed to build for build for your time and build for 
not build for art work, but you build, yeah, yeah, labor. <laughs> yeah, the labor you build for profit and and those types of a thing, those types of things. Um, and, but you never, you know, you never stop learning. That's the one thing I will say. You never really stop learning. So there's always something new, something coming out that's going to help you in in that journey. But you have to be willing to uh, just be open to learning new things. Have you always been freelance, or have you worked with any corporations? Oh no, um, <laughs> uh, work for I've uh, I've been freelance for a while. I've worked for uh, companies. Um, most recently, I was uh, working for uh, Line Forge Comics. Okay. Uh, from basically the uh, as a freelancer, I worked for them, and as from pretty much the start uh, till the launch when I was on full time as a full time employee, uh, working there, and jobs including anything from writing books to doing promotional art to um, writing things for for the company uh, manifestos credos whatever they needed at the time uh, spec scripts um, creating turning books into uh, turning movies into comic books right uh, so uh, adaptations uh, all those things just kind of came across my table I got a question for you mm -hmm. much like the music industry when you're signed to a major label you're kind of packaged they tell mm -hmm. you kind of with the sound that they want you to put out to sell that they want to mm -hmm. sell for you and it, it stifles your creativity and you don't feel free you don't feel like you know you feel limited marginalized right do you feel that way when you're working for a, co a corporation like that and and you're doing what they want you to do as opposed to you being like oh i got this great idea i'm gonna do this and this is i'm gonna sell this or this is what i'm gonna create and whatever do you feel marginalized do you feel like you're stifled any at any way no because even in that even in that situation um at the time i think i was at a, a I was in a more mature state, so you kind of understand the game that's been that 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 we're in. You know, um, some of the characters you're you you don't create, but they're text they're tasking you with guiding this character or or building the character out, you're building the so, character's life out, pretty much. Yeah, giving a, so, giving the, giving the character life, pretty much. Yeah, giving the character life. So you you have to create these stories. They don't. Uh, let's just for example, I, uh, it's a book I worked on. It's called Trimax. It's still available on Comixology. Uh, I didn't create so much create the characters, anything like that. But that whole series was was me writing and creating and and really bringing together. Um, oh wow! You know what is it called? First, Trimax. Trimax is the is the name of the book. Mm-hmm. It's it's the name of the book. It's a. Uh, and uh, you can find it on a uh, Comixology. It's still available in digital form. Comixology. So, Mm hmm okay. and comics obviously is a digital um uh, uh comic book site so okay. and, and applications but it's owned by amazon now so most people can just log on with their amazon account oh and find it and they can literally there's a reader and you can read the comics and all that type of stuff so oh wow and, and, we, and we had fun on the project though i'm gonna have to check that out yeah yeah it was it was a fun project but again i didn't create the characters but you I pretty much created the character. Gave them life, yeah, right? You gave them yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. We so, and then on the flip side, <coughs> excuse me. On the flip side, you have to, um, if you do have something that you create, um, it's kind of up to you if you want to bring mm -hmm. it to your the mm -hmm. parent company, so to speak. If you want mm -hmm. to, um, if you want them to publish the book or shepherd the. Um, which means that you may be subject to editors or somebody that you bring in. Or, and if you don't want to do that, then you always, obviously you can just produce it yourself. No. So those, there's those decisions that you have to make as a, as a creator. Um, I was in a good place where I, I was working with the company and also learning the publishing industry. And then mm. from that point, I kind of made the decision to move forward with my own creator own and publish on, on my own okay so you got your own publishing company yes yes publish your own website piece? publishing okay so you're all in-house pretty much yeah for the most part i'm in i'm in-house um like i still do some fr freelance projects for, uh for for people just depending on 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 the parameters and everything like that okay 
uh but for the most part as of right now uh i'm all in with foresight publishing and um but you know you, you might see see a, a book that, I, that i've created with another publisher because i think one of the things that can happen is that you can take a project and say okay i think you guys can can do something with this so right let's work out a deal and and that's just it's just at this point it's just business it's just nothing but business wow that's interesting i never i never really knew um how how those dynamics worked or, or mm-hmm. mechanics of the of just being an artist and working you know for a corporation and doing the things on your own so you're doing everything on your own now you got your publishing company how do you market yourself is it is it by word of mouth because of your, your work is so good <laughs> <laughs> well, you would always hope that it's word of mouth, but no. Um, so before up up until now, I was doing a lot of the marketing myself, self marketing, um, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, those types of things. Um, but it wasn't consistent because you no know, army of one. Yeah. Uh, so uh, recently brought on as uh, marketing and management uh, somebody you're very familiar with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um. And uh, uh, Miss Roundtree, Miss Michelle Roundtree yes, is, uh, yes, yes. Uh, she's yeah. uh, uh, taking the bull by the, literally <laughs> by the horns. <laughs> yeah, good choice, good choice. She does a thing. She, 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 she does a thing. Yeah, I'm finding that out <laughs> <laughs> in a good way. I, I, I'm playing around, but in, in a good way. Um, so I'm, I'm really, I really have my hopes up that this year it's going to really kind of. We can really see the results that we're that I'm wanting to see, yeah. and I had that because I think I got. Um, I've also um, have been able to meet and mentor some really really dope artists, mm-hmm. and um, so I've been able to kind of get them to do work with me. Uh, last year, I was going to um, ask you, were you kind of going to form a team or just have them, you know? Like an alliance, I guess. I'm not really a team, you know, but you got artists that you work with or you kind of mentor and stuff like that. So I have yeah. I have artists that I've been working with. Um, shout out to Miss uh, Audrey, Audrey Suntra uh, and Renai Richardson. And I've got some artists um, that I'm looking to help bring in, bring up uh, as interns and, and hopefully get them work uh, that are coming out of my um, illustration class that I taught over at UMSL. Um, so, Okay. And then I have artists that I've done collabos with um, previously that I'm that I am looking very much forward to to working with again. They're they and they're pretty much just hey Dave, just shoot the contract over. So um, I'm looking forward to that because one, as things ramp up and 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 you already know how Miss Michelle goes, we we already got a lot on the plate. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, she moved um, man quickly. Yeah, very quickly. So. <laughs> uh, we're going to, you know, we're going to have a bit of things for these artists to do, and um, and then we can kind of move more as a unit. And I, and I'm really loving it because, again, a couple of these artists I've really I've worked with uh, uh, since before they went off to college. Um, oh wow! Okay. One like well, one was in college, and and with Renaya, I've been working with her um, or, and just showing her things uh, since tenth grade. Yeah, tenth. Yeah, her tenth grade. Uh- um, and she's an incredible, incredible artist. Uh, do you have Do you have the Instagram handles? Show them. Um, I have uh, Audrey is Scouts Art. I have to get them to you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just I just want for the viewers to be able to go and check them out. You know what I mean? Show them, get, put some light on them. Yeah, uh, uh, Audrey is Scouts Art. Now I don't know. I don't know if Renee is is, is back up yet. Okay. I don't know if hers is back. Scouts up. Art. Scouts art, scouts dot art, I believe. Is scouts dot art. Okay, check it out. It's, yeah. I just uh, let me check real quick. Okay, no <laughs> doubt. But but I but I but uh, yeah, they're definitely um excellent excellent artists, and I think that that you're you're going to see some, and, and you actually see what our, uh, Audrey does. Actually, it's underscore scouts dot art. Underscore scouts dot art. She made it real hard. <laughs> <laughs> Then that generation though, that that's what they do. They you right. Know, you miss but, one of them, you ain't never find it. <laughs> well, she, you know, you know what? She's building the following, and she's um, 
she's an excellent artist and she's actually done a lot of work in fact um we did the collab of uh, Mermaid Cove, which is one of the coloring oh, books that was okay. put out this right. year. That. Uh, that that was her working over my layouts, and okay. uh, that book came out. Ooh, boy, that book came out dope. Um, so, again, those are the type of things that I'm looking to to do to build up build up these other artists. Uh, of course, build up build out the roster of books that are coming from this this crazy brain of mine, and 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 just get them out there to the masses, and so everybody can enjoy them. Yeah, we're gonna talk about one that I, I saw that you were kind of advertising. That's that's new for you. Mm-hmm. That I want to talk to the point that you were talking about, or we we're talking about, basically you giving these characters life. So mm-hmm. when I think about art, right? Mm-hmm. So every piece of art has a story, or can tell a story, right? right. It can tell a story, right? And it's to the eye or the mind of the beholder mm-hmm. what that story may be. So for you. Mm-hmm. You come. You come from just creating still pictures, art, cartoons. Correct. Mm-hmm. What in creating comic books and creating a, a narrated type of story and a narrated life to these characters? What intrigues you to go that route instead of just creating art and putting it on the wall? Just putting a singular piece on the wall. Yeah. Um, so a singular piece is 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 subject to interpretation. You can make up right. the, the story yourself. Um, I always say that visual storytellers, we don't want you to interpret it for yourself. We okay. have a point and a goal. We want to get you to. Um, we have um, and and that's more or less what I consider myself more than just a a guy that draws or writes is a visual storyteller um and the reason i say that is because what we what we do is we convey that we convey uh a narrative uh using using art uh obviously and what we want you to do is we want to take you to we want to take you through the ups and the downs we want you to you know ooh and ah and then you know get online and talk about how toxic one character is as, as compared to another so we want you to be enthralled and entertained um i always say that comics and graphic novels is a uh, basically the poor man's big budget movie <laughs> you know that because i had i had a guy tell me that once now i i now granted this was a company that was just taking advantage of people okay but the, but the problem was <laughs> um i sent them one of my concepts and he looked at he's like man this is too expensive I can't push pitch this in Hollywood. That's un- it, they're gonna look at this like, bro. I'm not about to give this nobody a hundred million dollars to make a movie. <laughs> so he thought that basically the 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 animation, the graphics, and all that. Well, if you like, translate it into a live action movie, just the special effects alone are expensive. Right. Okay. You gotcha. know, and, and and even though the 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 the, the particular company they were shysters. That, that he was like, look, man, I'm just gonna tell you the truth. <laughs> I like the concept. I can't, I can't sell this to anybody. They, they could have, but yeah. the people that they were trying to sell it to wouldn't. Have, they were going to be turned off because they're like, look, I ain't trying to spend that type of money. So, to for me, it's this is the poor man's big budget movie because um, I don't have a hundred million dollars to blow up a planet like the event, like Disney does, <laughs> right? Uh, but I can sit on some bristol board and and pull out a pencil or on a nice program and whip out my digital pen and then i can just blow up an entire planet show the whole thing if you show it dynamically everybody's looking like ooh in an eye so you still get the you still get that that um effect wow i never looked at it like that yeah that's that's, that's that's true though yeah yeah you know i never really got into comic but like i I like to look through the comic books when I was mm-hmm. a kid, but I never really got into the stories of the comic books. But I was always intrigued by the the artistry. Man, um, I'm gonna tell you the story that I I would read the com- I would read comic books. The story that turned me out was um, the 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 actual X Men Dark Dark Phoenix saga, and. In that story, the reason why I turn, and I always tell everybody, I tell anybody this story. The reason why, why it just, I was just, I was just into it from beginning to the end, and you just, 
I had to see see more and see more and and the thing was Marvel had re-released it um because it came out in the late 70s and I wasn't getting comics but then in the 80s I'm purchasing comics as part of my allowance so I'm getting this book monthly and I'm reading this and I'm just going nuts because the whole story just it just grabbed you and it held you and it was very um it's so it's soap opera it's superpowers and explosions and and drama and betrayal it, everything that you want in the great story so you have to look at it like this all the things that people got in game of thrones you're going to get in, you're going to get in these series in fact it's, there's really no difference between comics and uh what you would consider traditional prose literature other than one has pretty pictures and the other does not but the the writers are using the same big vocabularies and everything and and the it's just the visuals encompass the the description so instead of somebody saying hey they he grabbed the planet you can actually see galactus grab a planet and you're right. just like oh my god that's what it would look like right and you're like oh wow so yeah um a good storyline will turn anybody into a comic book fan because it's just it'll just it'll grab you i always like i think i think what grabbed me to the illustrations was like the exaggeration mm -hmm. the drawing so that you know it's just over the top big uh, it, yeah for a kid i mean it, it's appealing it's eye appealing so yeah but i just never got into it i no. i i did collect comics for a little bit and i read them and then i don't know i just kind of faded off from that i probably got distracted man i don't know doing something else i was i was more of a sports kid anyway so I was into football and stuff like that and collecting cards and all that type of stuff and trading the cards. Watch, so watch wrestling? Nah, I never really got into wrestling because I always knew it was fake. <laughs> <laughs> what about movies? What kind of movies? Well, I, I well I just got into like the Avengers and the Marvel and stuff like that. Oh no, 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 no. Not no. the superhero movies, just movies in general. Because you would be surprised. Oh, I like I like um, movies like Glory, uh, movies like Shawshank Redemption. That's the type of stuff I like. You know, even as a kid, that's the type of stuff I like. I don't even know what category that is, but that's the type of stuff I like. Well, see, the problem is, the thing is, is that people think that things like um, comics would, would not fit in those genres, but that's not the case. Um, Road to Perdition is a was based off of a comic book. That's there's no superheroes in that. Oh wow! Other than other than the fact that Tom Hanks' character was just scary, right? Um, so there's a lot of movies that you wouldn't think were inspired by comic books that are inspired by comic books. There's a lot of directors and uh, directors of photography uh, that are catching angles. They are using comic books, uh, anime, as their uh, point of reference, and you wouldn't even know it, but they're um but there are but they are and that's the reason why you get the crazy angles and you get yeah if you get like if you look at like a, a movie like oh boy you see that 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 crazy one shot um mm -hmm. fight you know that's basically just a, uh, that that's just basically a really long panel uh of of, of just a guy going through that's but it's framed in a way you wouldn't even think about a comic book unless you've been there. Or, or you wouldn't think about anime or animation unless you, you, you're just kind of looking like, oh, okay, I see what they're doing there. So what about Quentin um, Tarantino? I think does he Tarantino Tarantino is in, he's influenced by everything. Okay. And what <laughs> about Americana. movies like um I don't know if that was Quentin Tarantino that did um No, was it Kill Bill? No. Yeah, Kill Bill was Tarantino. That's the that Tarantino. Okay. And in and, and Kill Bill, remember the, one of the backstory was literally told in in in, in the vignette that was a, a by a, a anime company. Yeah, so that's what yeah. I'm thinking about. Yeah, because that's but it that's has to be comic graphic. book influenced. If you look at some of the the way he films things and some of the fight scenes, you you would see you if you read comics on a regular basis. You would say, okay, there's the influence. Yeah. Or if you if you watch anime or, or read mangas, you would see the influence because those were those that's what that was that's what the influences were. Right. But if you don't, you're not going to get it. But you just know that this movie moves different. It 
talks different. It, it feels different than some of the other movies that I've watched. So again, it's um, people think that comics is just superheroes. I, to be honest, I don't even do superhero comics. I do adventure comics. Okay. Um, comics can be any genre. And back in the day, it used to be all kinds of genres. And then people just, for some silly reason, forgot. You said romance comics, Western comics. Yeah, I do comics. remember. Yeah, yeah. You know. And you don't see that anymore? You you do now. People don't talk about it. But this guy is making, um, they're making like very good careers <laughs> off of doing nothing but like crime comics. Uh, Greg Rucker. He puts out books that are just crime books and and these just these gritty gnarly books and then he you know he's selling these co- concepts to as TV shows and then they get repurposed and renamed and they come out on Netflix and everybody's going crazy and I'm just sitting back looking like that's a comic book <laughs> or that's a graphic novel so yeah that's the base but then it can grow from there and that's you know like most of your favorite shows right now. A lot of well, I wouldn't say most of them, but a lot of shows that you're you're watching today on Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, on NBC, CBS, ABC, they have roots in comics that you wouldn't even believe yeah, because you know, yeah, if you're most not of them think the comics are superheroes. Yeah, that, that's crazy. Tights and capes. <laughs> that's crazy, man. So let's talk about what you got going on. What what's your latest project right now, and some of the work that you that you've done. What's your, what's your proudest work thus far? What can you uh, be thus proud far, of? my pride, <laughs> the, the pride of St. Louis. Um, <laughs> uh, right now, uh, the latest project that I released was uh, Kwame Hightower and the New Knights. Um, okay. So I guess my proudest work is Kwame Hightower, uh, just because that's my first creator-owned character that I've actually put out um, on the professional stage. The first book, Kwame Hightower and the Man with No Name, came out in 2018, and um, uh, got a good response from it and everybody since then has started really kind of liking the character and really kind of wanting more from, from the character uh, so this year I put out a deluxe edition of the first book okay. which had the which would have the backup story which was Kwame Hightower and the New Knights um, and then subsequently I turned new, uh, Kwame Hightower and the New Knights into a, a coloring comic book that people can if you know that you can color and add the color to and all that great stuff um so the basic story behind uh Kwame Hightower is uh it's a 12 year old kid he's living in uh London England and he hates it there so I make it worse by having him pull Excalibur from the stone and becoming the king of England and (laughs) we just got to send him on all kinds of crazy um insane fantastic adventures so um that's where we are right now we're going to have a second book hope hopefully get have that done um by the second half of the year and uh get that out so i think uh and uh and then we have about four more books that we're going to do in that series um so some other projects that i've got that i'm working on right now um that uh that i um feel free to talk about uh we've got another book out are coming out called the kaiju master which is about a, a kid that can um control giant monsters to fight a robotic race that's enslaved humanity set in the future oh, wow. um we've got kiki and the unicorn that's coming out uh, which is basically a story of this uh, girl that this um discovers this unicorn on her grandfather's um farm and kind of this adventure that they go on mm-hmm. um it's a lot of magic and mystery so a lot of fun stuff there. Um, let's see what else we've got. Uh, another book that I'm going to be working on is a book called Chores, in which two kids uh, make a wish. It's a children's book. They make a wish that uh, that their house can just clean itself. <laughs> yeah, well, we all. Yeah, <laughs> the wish comes true. But you know what they say: be careful what you wish for. I know <laughs> it's getting wild out here, man. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. so your self cleaning house can um can 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 become something bad right. and then of course we've got um there's a lot of other a um, lot of other projects a uh, gun bunny uh which will be a digital comic is coming and uh free agent and basically she's uh, again said in the future uh bounty hunter uh type person that decides to kind of go on their own from the corporation that they 
that they were working for when a corporation goes down because the CEO got caught in a Ponzi scheme. Yes, in the future, people still do Ponzi schemes. <laughs> and, um, well, you know, it's kind of like it's just like any other company that gets caught in a Ponzi scheme. Uh, you have no job. You have no pension. You have nothing. Bye. <laughs> yeah, so, pretty much. So she decides to go into business for herself. She starts working for her people that the comp- that the corporations don't want so they try to bring her force her back in with her contract so it's just a, you know just kind of an entrepreneur's journey with guns and explosions <laughs> <laughs> somebody who come and come back and sh- shoot the damn place up <laughs> yeah you know so um so those are some of the creative projects that we're going to be working on uh over the year also we've got uh, definitely the world of Kwame Hightower uh, NFT trading card collection. Let's talk which, about that. Let's talk. Hold we'll on, talk before about. you get into that, real quick, mm-hmm. I just want to commend you. I want to mm-hmm. commend you for making comics that look like us. Oh, always. And that, and, and that our children can relate to and they can see that, hey, yeah, we can be superheroes too. We can be this, we can be that. So I do want to commend you because I recognize that. And I'm not saying that's all you do, but I do see that you put a lot of focus into that. And I'm pretty sure that was a thought out process. Actually, it wasn't. It was unconscious. Okay. It was just you, 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 you create characters that look like you. That resonate with you. Yeah. You, you know, you basically, you built, you're building them. Your characters are influenced by your surroundings. I've always been. I've always been in predominantly. I live in predominantly black communities. I see black, black entrepreneurship. I, I, you know, it, it's just it is what it is. Now, as now, there is some sort of thought process to it because you know you you do see things are not equally represented, Correct. right? Yep. So you want you definitely want you want your characters to be the be the the torchbearer. But yeah. now it's just you want your characters out and you want people to see, oh, well, I've got all these characters and they look like me. They look like they look like my kids. Right. And we can we can relate to these characters. But the initial from from day one. From the day from the day I really started drawing and. Honestly, just creating and formatting characters in my head. They always look like they always look like me, you know. Well, one, well of my, actually, one of my oldest characters. I commend I was, you for yeah. staying true to yourself. Then, yeah, it's it's just it, it, that's why I say this is not. It wasn't even because con- I because I can't say it was a conscious thing because I was doing it when I was in high school in junior high. Okay, <laughs> I mean, and you know, we, back in the eighties and in the late seventies, eighties, we we weren't thinking like that. We were just creating, right? And you're not thinking about that type of an impact, and right. that was always. That that was always like you know, some of my characters had the the, the big old mustaches like <laughs> that they had back in the eighties. So, Great, uh, they just that's just the look. Yeah, that's dope, man. That's yeah, dope. I love it. I love it. By the way, if I haven't told you that, it, yeah, I love. Oh it. no, no, this like like I say, it's more thought, I guess now, but I'm like just that root. I just want people to understand like you're that root is just coming from an unconscious i just want characters to look like me yeah and and, and, and I, you know, i'm going to create them and i and i may i may need to talk with you too man because i you know you see my you see my little head yeah, yeah, yeah you see my little head i i want to i think i want to grow that into something so i might I might need to talk to you off to the side you know later yeah. down the line <laughs> yeah, yeah let's talk about it you know what i'm saying like might need to talk about it. yeah yeah for sure we we'll do that, but let's talk about the NFT because mm-hmm. NFTs are blowing up. Let's talk about yeah, they that. Are. They are. So, what we're doing right now is um, myself and um, some other artists that we, we're all grouped together. Um, we're putting together several NFT collections. Um, now, one one that's more of a personal NFT collection is, of course, World of Kwame Hightower which is a trading card set. So imagine just your trading cards, but only available digitally. Digitally, yeah. Right. Yeah, um, oh. yeah it's, it's uh, we're gonna have some fun. Um, so they're gonna be specialty cards and all that type of stuff. So what, basically what I want want people to know, and, and <laughs> it's funny we had this conversation just this afternoon. Um, we want to 
be the group that helps bring black people in and, and gives them a shot at, at these collectibles. Um, there, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, it's a lot of money and coming in and this is, these numbers are impossible and how is this happening? And, and you really just have to understand a couple things. The digital artwork is validated as original once you register it or mint it on the blockchain. So that's what makes it an original, right? Right. So anything that comes after that is just a copy and has little to no value. It's the original that has the value. Non-fungible. Right. The non-fungible token. That's the non-fungible part. So once it's minted and that's minting is basically just a fancy word for uh, we looked at it, we documented it, we have like you know what it's like when you got the 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 comic book or the trading card in the in the plastic mm-hmm. and the company said that we've we've signed and documented it and said that it's a 5.5 or 10 yeah you know we've rated it that's is that's what the blockchain is except they don't do all that rating stuff this is the original this is it and whoever buys it you own it right um what makes what makes nfts different and far more um, viable to artists is the equity that it brings to artists mm-hmm. that we didn't have before. Um, you know, they're fine arts guys. They do a painting. They might sell their painting. Say, for instance, they got a name and they sell a painting $50,000. That's a lot of money, right? Yeah. A lot of money. $50,000, one whop, $50,000, right? But what happens when the person that owns the painting then sells it for five million. Yeah, no. they get. You do they get a residual off of that? Nope. What they do now. <laughs> yes. So again, I sell, I sell a a a, a work of art. Um, maybe it's at, uh, um, we'll just say the value is five thousand dollars U.S. Uh, obviously, depending on what cryptocurrency you're using, that could be however many in that in that in that currency, right? Right. So we're just talking about current crypto that's been transferred over back to USD. Say somebody then resells that work for twenty five thousand, they've got made a twenty thousand dollar profit. Mm-hmm. Slow down, buddy. I need my ten percent. <laughs> that's, that's already baked in. Yep. So that prop that that painting or that piece of work that work of art that i just sold for five thousand when they sell it for twenty thousand my ten percent hits my bank account and all i get is a notification on my phone and i roll back over and go to sleep yeah so when people are saying things like um whether it's whether it's the um passive income that's passive income (laughs) Because if you're on, because the only and the, but the thing is, the only way to be, the only way to get to it is to be in it. Right. So you have to to you have to be available for it, and you have to you know have the creativity. But once again, once you, if your artwork is on 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 the blockchain, and it's in these in these different places and it's moving, and people are, it's just moving up the chain. More people are, are moving up the moving from one buyer to to the next. The value is growing, and obviously, then the price that they're paying for it is growing, and you just sit, is collect your ten percent every sale. Yeah, and and your pockets and your bank account is growing. Yeah, it's and, a beautiful thing. And, That's the part that people are missing. That's the part where you know people are like the people that are making a mockery of it, like, oh, what is this? This is nonsense. I can just screenshot this. And you don't understand. No, you can't screenshot. And it means to <laughs> yeah, you screenshot it. It has no value, but you don't. The they don't understand. Is what it means to the artist and how right. able it can be to the artist is creating a whole new stream of income a whole new revenue you, you just said yourself you were you spent part of your your downtime on the metaverse yep and you know what real estate uh digital real estate is going for and people are like well this doesn't make sense this doesn't make sense because you're not In- wanting it to make sense yeah you know i would love to have a digital spot next to snoop dog you know <laughs> yeah and had had i jumped in and, and and did it early 
could have got it. You know, yeah. Lord knows what if, if, if people was having the, the discussion about whether to take fi- the five hundred thousand dollars or to have uh have dinner with Jay Z, uh, just imagine if Jay Z sets up a, a mansion in the metaverse. All them cast it was like, I'm taking them. Uh, there you go, go be his neighbor. He'll never talk to you, but but <laughs> right, <laughs> you can be his neighbor. Right, and but but that's where the value comes in because then you can write, hey, I'm neighbors with Jay Z in the metaverse. And then obviously, now you if you're savvy about it and you're an operator about it, you know, you can build that into something. You know, Absolutely. in the, you in the metaverse, it. you're going to have NFT galleries. Yeah. There's, there's NFT galleries now, but imagine going to an NFT gallery in the in the, in the, in the, in the metaverse. Yeah. It, it, it's the possibilities are there and we have to and we we as black folk have to be more understanding of them because I'm going to tell you who's really doing it and, and, and taking advantage of it and it's not the people you would think that money right now the money that's coming in is coming in for Saudi Arabia and China and mm-hmm. they're all in Yeah, they ain't talking about this don't make sense they, they're spending big money man they're spending money big money and, and they're coming from all points yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah. And I was, no. telling, I was telling other people too, like, you got to understand people that were early adopters of crypto and their, their accounts are looking really nice. It's nothing for them to say, oh, let me take this 200000 and just buy this NFT because I know I can later on flip it and make more money. It, to them, they're not losing money. To them, it's not a waste of money. And at the end of the day, they never even touched that money. That money accumulated in their account because they were early adopters. So it's nothing for them to just take that Say here, give me that NFT. I'm gonna go and flip this for a couple million later on down the line. It's not they're just moving around money. Yeah. Spending well, profit. The today, I mean, literally we're talking we were talking about the Bitcoin pizza guy. That guy right there, the luckiest man on earth. Because he made the decision when the guy uh, said, Hey, I don't have cash, I, I can pay you in Bitcoin. Yeah. He made the decision to accept this man's the Bitcoin payment. For the pizza. How many Bitcoins now, at did the he give time, him? Hmm? How many Bitcoins did he give him? At the time, Bitcoin wasn't. I don't even think it was at a dollar yet. So he, had give him, it, he, he gave him a couple of them things then. He gave him a, a lot of Bitcoin. Because <laughs> if you think of like. Yeah, but it's not a dollar. Say, ain't paying, what, 14, 15, 20 bucks for a pizza. Yeah, twenty bucks for a pizza, and the guy he's getting at least at least two two full bitcoins on the dollar, at least two, maybe three, yeah. four, five. Now, what people don't understand, one bitcoin at that time may have been fifty cent, right? Twenty cent. One bitcoin <laughs> in on uh, January fourth, twenty twenty two. Yeah, it's over fifty five thousand dollars USD right now. Yeah. So the guy that's the guy that the Tom Brady football guy. Yep. Everybody and their mama would sit there. I, Tom Brady is cheap. He gave him one Bitcoin. How much is that? I'm like, Tom Brady just gave the man sixty thousand yeah, dollars. Exactly. Literally, he could cash out right now. Right. He gets yeah. it. That man. That man. If he ever gets into a bind, even if Bitcoin drops, it's not going to drop that far. Nah. It's going. If it drops to fifty thousand dollars, I got one free full Bitcoin. Let me cash this out, pay all my bills, and live good. Yep. <laughs> like, come People on. People better get with it, man. People better get with it. And and, and uh, we were lamenting that <sighs> we didn't understand at the time. So we didn't invest when we should have. Oh, my God. And it's just, you're looking at it now, and, and you're saying, well, these people are Bitcoin billionaires. They That means they pulled the money out. They've already pulled the money out. That money is, is liquid. It's USD now. Yeah. But and here's the funny part. They're savvy enough to know I ain't pulling everything out. Hell no. Nah. I'm pulled out enough to, to live good. Yeah. Get my get my really fast, expensive hundred to two hundred and fifty thousand dollar car. Yeah. A nice three hundred thousand dollar, four or five, six hundred million dollar mansion. Right. If they want. And we're gonna do the rest. We're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna go with the flow. Yeah. Keep some in so, and let it run back up too. 
Yeah, let's run right and now. And now you got what the Coinbase card, you got the crypto.com card, you could keep mm-hmm. it in there as USDC and Coinbase and just spend it off the card, right? And now it's 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 gotten to a point because people gotta understand this is decentralized money, so you know, there there can be other coins other than Bitcoin, but right now, Bitcoin is, is the boss, boss, all bosses, yeah, yeah, but there are other coins. So there's other opportunities. Right now, Ethereum is like at at one ether, one ether is like about I think we looked at like three thousand. Yeah, it's at thirty thousand dollars. I think that's gonna be the dollars. next one. I think that's gonna be the next one to run up because of the whole decentralized banking, man. NFT is about to run Ethereum up the wall because people are, are minting using Ethereum. I know. There's there's some other there's some other Bitcoins that people are using, but they haven't run up, which is cool. Because that, and that's one of the things. That's what democratizes it. Like yeah. one, and I was thinking about that today. One can get popular and get run up, but there are others that aren't as popular yet, but they are. They still have value. Yeah, and you can still do what you need to do. So, you know, it's just people get into a popularity contest, and they think. And we also have to look at what we consider, uh, what we truly consider a failure or something like that. Right. Like these guys right now that's making fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars in a year, a hundred thousand dollars off of NFTs and people would tell them they're a failure. And like that and that person is looking at them like, Bro, <laughs> I work I work I make thirty thousand dollars a year at my, my BS job with the boss I hate and the coworkers I really don't like. Right. I sold one NFT, I got fifty I got fifty grand in the bank. Yeah. I sell two, that's a hundred grand. I can tell my job I quit. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, keep I'm flipping. a failure. <laughs> just keep flipping. Yeah, you just keep flipping. You just keep going. So there that is democratized for the artist, which is great. It's an investment opportunity for anybody that wants to get into it. You just have to be you just have to kind of understand what you're getting into and not fall for People that are kind of coming at you with get get rich quick scams and all that type Drug of stuff. Pools. Yeah. Drug pools, yeah. Rug pools. You got people creating NFTs. They get all the money and just run off and not yeah. buy yeah. it. Yeah. You know that and that. So that's that's something that the communities want to have to do, uh, address. Yeah. But you know you have legitimate like you know, uh, you know you board a yacht club, yacht club. Going you can get in on the you, you know you can still get in on the board apes. You may not. And, and it's it's so crazy. Yeah, they're selling big money ones, but they still it's still affordable in a, in a sense that if you have enough in ether, yeah, you can come in and you can you can snag one up and eventually you can snag one up too. Yeah, yeah. And then you can just watch that. And then as soon as you snag it up, guess what? Somebody's gonna be like, "Oh, you got that? I want it." Yep. And you say, "Well, I want this." <laughs> it's all hype driven, man. It's all hype yeah, it's all hype driven. So it there it, it's possible for people to get in and not only make money, but some people some people are just grabbing and sitting. Yeah. And waiting. They want they want they don't want just one bidder. They want 20, 25, 30, 40 bidders. <laughs> Let me see how far this can run up. Yeah. I'm gonna just sit on this. Man, you still ain't gonna sell it? No, I'm not selling nothing. Not until I see the number I want. Exactly. And that's what you want. So you could come in, you could come in low, and within a matter of days, you could be at a point where, when you're ready to pull the trigger, your number's right there for you. Yeah, it, and that's if you're an NFT investor. Guy is the limit, brother. And yeah, we're still, we're still on the floor too. We're still on the floor with this. Yeah, yeah it's just like you have no a idea what the hell an NFT is. So many people, no idea. Well, the thing about it is, is that I think it's going to be a boom for the world of art and uh, music and creatives as a whole. Um, creatives are going to have to stop being so willing to sell themselves short. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, you know, this company told me this. I said, hey, this slow down. <laughs> you can do this yourself. <laughs> yeah. And it'll be a lot more profitable. Uh, but that that's the one thing. That, that's why I tell a lot of artists and when a lot of parents ask me, what does my kid need? They're a great artist. What do they need? Business class. Number one thing 
any artist needs business class because drawing drawing is drawing is like is like basketball players with good coaching good training and you getting your reps every day if you know working on your fadeaway or you're working on your perspective the same thing you're working on your skill you're working on your skills right, right. you need a business class and you don't even have to graduate, but you need to have that education. That's the one thing that I learned. I always say, well, we went through the school of hard knocks, but we all have lamented, yeah, if we ain't got business classes, might have been a little bit easier. Yeah. But, you know, hard headed. <laughs> hey, but you learn. Yeah, you learn. You, you learn. learn. Whether you like it or not, you're going to learn. On the job training. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of on the job training, but it was good. I, I, I wouldn't change it for the world, but now. I can I can advise most young artists more than art class. You need business classes because, and this is this is artists, mu artists, painters, musicians, especially musicians. God Almighty, if I see one more documentary about these singing groups, <laughs> it's nineteen, it's twenty twenty one. We're still getting took with these bad deals. Why? Right, right. Go take. Just spend a little bit of money. Go to your community college. You ain't got to go to man. good college. It's so, it's just people just want to be famous. No. They, no. they want to be famous, man. You got to know how to just so you understand how to control your business. You can still be famous. Don't you still be uh, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, you know, these labels, they're going to bait them as if, hey, man, this deal's not going to be on the table forever. And they just jump on it like, where do I sign? Man, when Russ when Russ said that uh, the labels are nothing but banks, that was the realest thing that that has ever been said about label situations in the history of music. Yeah. And it actually, in it just extended, just these, these corporations are nothing but banks. Yeah. So you have to understand how to operate the business, and if you look at them like they're a bank then you know what that is that you're getting. That's a loan. Exactly. A loan all day. And Russ, hell, he funded his career with personal loans. Right. He's and he personal, have to pay the label back. Yeah, he, he doesn't have to pay anybody back. But, but now if he does a deal with the label, he already knows. And he already knows how to go take that money, go to, the, uh, to a real bank, say, hey, I'm doing this, this, this that, and other. Hey, how much yeah. they give you? A half mil? Or they gave you a mil? 1.5? Yeah. Here, here, take that 1.5. Take that here. Y'all done. <laughs> yep. You'll get your residual, but you're paid off. Yep. <laughs> and we're gonna create this music. Yep. Easy, man. Easy. So you just can't look at these companies to take care of nobody's gonna take care of you. If they if they're if they're saying, Hey, we're gonna take care of you, they're gonna take care of you, but right. they want something. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's the famous word. We'll take care of you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Whatever. No corporation taking care of you. They're gonna take care of you, all right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Crazy, it's crazy. It's rough out here, man. Hope y'all get. Hope you guys are paying attention. Everything is business. Mm -hmm. Everything. I don't care how yeah. fun it looks, or how fun it is, or how intriguing it is. Everything resorts to business. Why? Because the dollar drives everything. Everything. Everybody wants some money, man. Everybody wants to exploit you for some money. But if you, but if you know this and you operate, you won't get like. It would, that's the one that I, like artists like certain artists I see them certain artists that street artists um, combo artists you see guys like Russ if you because you know when you know that they know because they don't look like they're stressed about anything that yeah. results from that yeah yeah personal <laughs> relationships that can be something else you guys because you know artists musicians we got to have some messed up because we got to create <laughs> yeah I got to make a love song or something, you know, so you, you, you have to draw for something. But that side, when an artist is on top of their their business, none of that stuff bothers them. Yeah, it's just free. They're in control. They're in control, yeah. They're in control of their destiny, man. That's what it is. Hey, tell everybody where they can find you to, to get to render some of your services and find all that great artwork, all the comic books. We're so as yet. So um as a as a combo guard that's create a lot of content. So obviously I have a YouTube channel, uh at DKG72 is my YouTube channel. Uh, DKG72, I should say, is the YouTube channel. 
So please go there, uh, subscribe, watch the videos. Uh, I give a lot of the uh, same thing that I'm doing here. I give a little information and, and a lot of you no know, reviews, uh, vlogs, all those types of things. So you just see what the life of a, a freelance creator uh, that can create his own shot is. That's what what that looks like. Um, as far as Foresight Publishing is concerned, Foresight Studio, you can always go to the website www.foresightstudio.com. Um, got merch on there. We got original artworks. Got prints. Um, all kinds of things. So, you know, please go there to support. Um, the books are also, all my books are available on Amazon. If you can put in Foresight Publishing, you can put in my name, David Gordon. All of my books are going to come up. You can put in Kwame Hightower. All of those books are going to come up. I, I know I check all the time, which is <laughs> narcissistic, but you yeah, you got to do it just to see how the algorithm is working. Yes, sir. <laughs> People say, well, what are you doing? You're checking your name. Yeah, I'm seeing what the algorithms are saying. <laughs> And, and now I'm at the top of the Google list. So good when you put in my name, good. So definitely um, go there on Amazon because um, it's going to come straight to you, which is cool. Um, and I've got a whole selection of from coloring books to graphic novels to uh, coloring comic books to notebooks, journals, all kinds of things that you guys can uh, can purchase. Um, got a lot of... Uh, other outlets if you guys ever want to talk to me at dkg72 on twitter and instagram yep. you got a facebook fan page and a tiktok that's david gordon 72 uh we got Put those into the description too I'm yeah yeah i got the website in the description so guys if you need to get in contact with him you need his services it is down there and i'll add all those twitter and the facebook links as well i got your instagram on there so yeah yeah a lot most mostly ig ig and I say IG, TikTok, and fan base. Oh, I am really, really a big supporter of Isaac Hayes Jr. So I don't know if anybody has talked about fan base, but I I don't know if it's gonna if it's gonna do as great as everybody thinks or anything like. I'm on there, and a lot of people are on there, and we're supporting the guy. And so go to fan base DKG72 on fan base. Um, so uh, that's. That's a uh, black social media app where he's seen some of the problems that happen on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. He's addressing them. He's giving giving us ways to monetize. Uh, they got some new stuff coming too soon. So uh, yeah, Dope. I'm a supporter of fan base. So I, I definitely want to shout out fan base personal. All right, yeah, everybody, y'all go check out fan base, man. Support that. Support that. Support that. Support David. Thank you so much for coming on tonight, my brother. I appreciate thank you coming, you. spending the time, dropping these jewels, and just putting us up on game, man, on how that industry really works and uh, just everything that you got going on, man. Blessings, blessings, blessings this new year, my appreciate brother. You. Keep doing your thing. I'm, we'll be talking because we, you know, we're, in, we're running in the same circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're running in the same circle. So, yeah, definitely, man. Get some work in with that. Um, yes, everybody, sir. you know where I'm at every Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here, kicking it. With somebody, somebody dropping gems, man. And tonight it was David Gordon. Thank you once again, my brother. Um, hey, man. Until next time, we are out of here. Anything you, any last words? Uh, please just support. Uh, go get the books. Definitely get the books. That's the best thing you can do. Buy, buy the books. And they're again, they're always available on Amazon. Uh, go check them out, please. Yes, I'm gonna go grab the Amazon links too and put them in the, in the description as well. I'll get those to you. Yes, sir. Make it easy. Yes. Sir. Yes. Yes. Until next time, y'all. Peace and love. We appreciate y'all, man. We thank you. Do it for you. Can't do it without you. Peace. We out of here, y'all. Yes, Lord. <laughs>